Welcome to another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. This is yet another installment in my series on why did I want this gun. I'm getting down towards the tail end of this series, mainly because I've reviewed most of the really interesting guns that I have that I think people would like, or guns that had backstories to them. So today I wanted to talk about the SKS. Now the SKS is one of those guns that it's pretty iconic, been in lots of movies. That's not really why I wanted it. And this particular variant that I have is a Chinese model made around 1961. It originally came in a jungle stock and I put it in a Russian wood stock. So as far as a little bit of history on this, the SKS has been around since 1945. Yes, it is the older brother to the more iconic AK-47 and AK-74 platform. While it is not as desirable as the AK-47 or AK-74, it still saw some wide use across the world. It was used in several skirmishes, but was quickly replaced by the AK-47, which was a lot more modular and offered a removable magazine that gave you faster rate of fire and greater capacity. Now, I'm going to be very honest with this one. Most of the reason that I bought the SKS was... At the time in my state when our attorney general had banned all so-called assault rifles, meaning AK-47s, AK-74s, and AR-15 variants, this was the only semi-automatic rifle that I could get in 7.62x39, and that was also the same type of form factor as an AK-47. So it's no surprise that I like old com block weapons. I like the Mohs and the Gants, and I like the SKS and the AK-47s just because they were made such a long time ago, the 1940s and 1950s, all the way back to the 1890s for the Mohs and the Gant. And just the technology that they had back then, the machining techniques that they had were really poor. And I just love the fact that they were ingenious enough to build these rifles that have really stood the test of time. So in this particular case, again, I have a Russian stock on my SKS, and this is an older version that still has the blade style bayonet rather than the spike style bayonet, which I like even more. Here you can see the adjustable rear sight, very similar to a Mosin Nagant. I believe this goes all the way up to 800 or 1000 meters, and it also has a battle zero, which is supposed to be used from close range up to about 300 meters. This rifle uses a stripper clip holding 10 rounds of 7.62x39 that is fed into an internal magazine inside the rifle itself. Very easy to load, very smooth to load, and even singly loading this is very simple. To empty the rounds out or to open the magazine, there's a latch on the bottom that you can simply pull back on and drop that bottom gate open to dump your rounds. The safety is very simple, part of the trigger guard, you flip it up to put it in safe mode, and you flip it down to put it in fire mode. Very simple mode of operation. Moving along to the buttstock on this rifle, there's a little spring-loaded flap. When you push that down, you can actually take out the cleaning kit, which has a few components that help you clean the rifle. The cleaning rod is actually mounted under the barrel that you can access when the bayonet is folded up but this would have your jag and a T-handle to help you clean your rifle. Now, while this rifle is fairly simple to take apart and clean, it's probably not quite as simple as an AK-47. On the back of the receiver, there is a little lever that you have to flip to the up position and then pull it out the right side of the receiver to remove the dust cap. You can see here I'm struggling with it a little bit because I don't take this gun apart that frequently. Once you take the dust cap off, the recoil spring comes right out and you slide the entire bolt assembly, which is two main pieces, to the back of the receiver, take the top portion out, and then take the bottom portion out. Once you clean it, just reverse this operation, put the lower bolt piece in, then put the top of the bolt in and slide it forward. You can then simply slide your recoil spring back in the end of the bolt and put your dust cover back on by lining up the two notches on the sides of the receiver and then sliding it down while pushing forward on the spring to keep tension on it. Then simply push the captive takedown pin back through the rear of the dust cover to hold it in place. 
Now, as far as the gas system on this, it uses a short stroke gas piston, very similar to an AK-47. On the right side of the receiver, there is a little lever next to the sight that you flip up at about a 30 degree angle, 40 degree angle. And then you can slide this Ford dust cover assembly off, which houses your gas piston So the fact that this is a historical rifle that shoots the 7.62x39 casing and the fact that it is a mostly uh, restrictive state compliant firearm are the main reasons that I wanted this. It's not elegant. It's kind of clunky. It's not that much fun to shoot. It's not that accurate. But yet every time I think about selling it, I cannot bring myself to do it. I just love this gun too much. So... Thanks for watching another edition of Why Did I Want This Gun? And thanks for joining me here at Cranky Gun Reviews. God bless America. Support your two-way rights. Make sure you get out there and shoot.